Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Grady Tech and in this video, I'm going to show you the most important tips and tricks for your Redmi Pad Pro. By the way, do hit the like button or dislike button below this video. It really helps the channel a lot. Now with that said, first I'll start off with the full screen gestures. Now you can enable the full screen gestures from these settings. And once you enable it, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent tabs. You can swipe from the left side or the right side to go back a step. For Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or the bottom right corner. And just like on iOS, you can just swipe left or right on the bottom bar to quickly switch between applications. Now these are all the basic gestures. Besides that, we have some very important gestures. First, let me show you split screen mode. Now split screen mode is a feature that allows you to use two applications at the same time. There are two ways to get started. For the first one, just go to the recent apps page and then tap and hold on any of these applications. And then you'll see these options to split the screen. Another way is if the application is already on your taskbar, just drag and drop it on the right side of the screen and it'll open up in the split screen mode. Next, we also have the three finger gesture to open split screen mode. You can just swipe horizontally with three fingers on the screen to open the current application in the split screen mode. Next, you can also do a quick swipe up using three or four fingers to go to the home screen. If you swipe and hold, you can go to the recent apps page. These are some of the cool gestures you should definitely try. Now that's not all. You can also open applications in floating windows. Once again, to open any application in a floating window, there are two ways. First, once again, go to the recent apps page, touch and hold on any of these applications, and then click this button to open the application in a floating window. Another way is if your favorite application is already on your taskbar, just drag and drop it in the center of the screen like this to open the application in a floating window. Now, once a floating window is open, you can resize it very easily, rearrange it, reposition it, or just hide it to the side. Now, at a time, you can have two applications in split screen mode and two applications as floating windows. So you can basically have four applications running at the same time side by side. By the way, if you're interested, you can also save this configuration of split screen mode directly from the recent apps page. It'll add a quick shortcut to your home screen. Next, we have double tap to wake and turn off. Once you enable this feature, you can just double tap the lock screen to wake it up and double tap it again on the lock screen to turn off the screen. This is a feature that I would definitely recommend you to try. Next, we have raise to wake. Once you enable this feature, you can just pick up your tablet to wake it up. You don't need to press any button, not even a double tap. It just wakes up. If you have already configured face unlock, it also unlocks the tablet immediately. Overall, it's a nice feature, but it can also be pretty annoying. Do give it a try. Next, we have memory extension. Now this tablet only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. If you further want to improve the memory management and the performance of this tablet, you can also convert your storage into RAM. That's basically memory extension and you can basically extend it up to eight gigabytes. If possible, I'd recommend you to set it at eight GB for the best experience. Next, we have Game Turbo. Now, once you open this application, you can see all the games installed on your tablet. Besides that, you can also configure settings related to Game Turbo, like GPU settings, in-game settings, in-game shortcuts, and so on. Even when you're playing a game, you can access this Game Turbo just by swiping from the side. From here, you can block calls, fix auto brightness, and do a lot of stuff related to gaming. Once again, if you like to play a lot of games, especially BGMI, you wanna check this out. Next, we have some new stylus and keyboard settings. I don't have a stylus or a keyboard, but if you do, this is the place you want to definitely check out. It has all the settings related to the stylus and the keyboard. Next, we have Xiaomi interconnectivity. If you have another Xiaomi or a Redmi phone, basically another phone running HyperOS, then you can connect your tablet to your phone and access all the content on your phone directly on your tablet. You can also share your clipboard and share notes as well. And finally, by using the same Xiaomi account, you can receive push messages, answer calls, and access applications of your phone directly on your tablet. Basically, it's an airdrop for Xiaomi. Next, I'm gonna show you how to enable the dark mode on this phone. So from settings, you can enable the dark mode and once you enable it, all the system UI elements change to the dark mode. Even stock apps like phone dialer, SMS application, even change to the dark mode. Even the Google applications will automatically change to the dark mode. Now this dark mode definitely helps you save some battery, looks much more cooler, and also affects your eyes less at night. From these settings, you can also schedule to automatically turn on and turn off dark mode at a specific time. Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots on this phone. By default, if you want to take a screenshot, you can just press the volume down button and power button both at the same time 
to take a screenshot. For some reason, if that's a bit difficult for you, on this phone we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. Once you enable it, you can just swipe down using three fingers to take a screenshot. By the way, we also have a quick shortcut to take a screenshot even in the notification toggles. Next, I'm going to show you how to enable split screen mode for all the applications. By default, all the applications do not support split screen mode. So to fix that, you need to go to the settings about page, click on the MIUI version seven times. Once you're done, developer options will be enabled. Now go back to settings, additional settings, and find developer options. Now scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable. Now once you're done and just restart your phone and then you will be able to use all the applications in the split screen mode. Next, I'm going to show you how to record calls automatically on your phone. For that, just go to these settings and just enable this option. Once you're done, your phone will automatically record all the incoming and outgoing calls. By the way, from these settings, you can also customize it to record calls only from few particular contacts. Next, if you want to change the display sleep time or the display screen on time, you can do that from these settings. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, this is what you need to do. Go to these settings and you can choose between any of these options. I would select percentage outside the icon. Similarly, if you want to display the network usage of your phone on the status bar, just enable this toggle. Once you're done, your phone will display the real-time network usage information on the status bar. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the default applications for regular profiles like the default browser, SMS, and so on. For that, you need to go to the settings and come to this particular page. And from here, you can change your default browser, default SMS application, default email app, and so on. Going on next, if you're someone who's really concerned about privacy about your phone and if you want to lock few applications on your phone, you can do that on this phone without installing any third-party applications. You can lock applications just like I've shown you in the preview. By the way, you can also have a different password for these locked applications from your phone's password, which is actually a pretty good thing. By the way, we can also use the face unlock features to unlock the locked applications. For that, we need to enable those options from settings. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks that you need to know about your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.